Hey, my name is Radek. I'm a senior data scientist at NVIDIA. And today I would like to tell you about a very exciting piece of technology. Uh, one that I'm, uh, you know, uh, super uh, fascinated with because it allows me to feed my deep learning models much faster. And also I have to write less code. So, you know, this is generally what I want in life. Uh, it's the Merlin Data Loader Library that was launched by my team not too long ago. And as you can see on the screen, um, to quite an acclaim, uh, this is a tweet by a person from Japan uh, who apparently put uh, the Merlin data loader to a test and they got a 400x uh, speed up. Uh, you know, <laughs> when you read statistics like this, it seems uh, uh, insane, uh, completely impossible. And yet, uh, I think this is very closely aligned to what data scientists, to what machine learning engineers are likely to see in practice. Uh, so let's take a look at what Merlin Data Loader uh, is, uh, how it does its thing, and uh, what uh, it can do uh, to your workflow. Um, also, here is another tweet by uh, JFP, uh, a legendary Kaggler and a colleague of mine from NVIDIA. So, uh, he seems to be enjoying using the uh, Merlin data loader quite a bit as well. And he uh, prepared a uh, Kaggle kernel um, in collaboration with me. And in this notebook, he's uh, walking you through how to uh, use uh, the Merlin data loader. So you'll have a chance to play around with this technology. So JFP is training a matrix factorization model here. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, um, I link to the notebook uh, from uh, videos uh, notes and you will be able to just um, fork it. So, you know, there's a lot happening in the notebook by JFP. So what I did here is I uh, created, uh, you know, my uh, notebook on my uh, local machine here uh, sitting on my desk to sort of uh, show you the gist of the technology where the uh, data loading will hopefully stand out. So let's see what's going on here. I'm importing a couple of libraries, nothing too fancy there. So we have NumPy, we have CDF for running on the GPU. Uh, that's generally my library of choice when it comes to, um, to tabular data because you know, the, the API is fairly complete and you get the GPU speeds, which is uh, always nice. And uh, then let's uh, read in the data. So we will be using data from the uh, ongoing Kaggle competition, the uh, auto competition. Um, it's, uh, it's a Rex competition, a very interesting one. Right, so let's read in the data. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, at what we have here. Uh, so uh, we will be working with action IDs. So action IDs are when a customer goes onto a website and they click something. So that, that's the ID of that thing. Um, that's uh, displayed here, and then they click something else. Uh, so it's a stream of consecutive customer actions. And uh, in order to train a matrix factorization model, which we will not do here, but uh, uh, later when I link to the notebook by JFP, this is what will be happening there. So here uh, we will deal with just the uh, data loading part. Uh, I really wanted that part to stand out. So that's that's what here in the notebook. and. Uh, um, in order to train a matrix factorization model, we need to have uh, an AID at uh, timestamp t and an AID at timestamp uh, t plus 1. So uh, an AID and the next uh, action that a customer will take. Uh, here we have a column of AIDs, so we're just uh, shifting it, uh, we're just shifting the column up and uh, up by 1 and uh, the earlier uh, AID at timestamp t uh, ends up being over here. The uh, next AID that was uh, shifted by one is in the uh, next AID column. Uh, now, uh, the only thing that we have to do here is clean up the data a little bit, because uh, if we're shifting the column like that, uh, some AIDs from uh, an earlier session, uh, or rather from a er uh, later session, will uh, end up uh, uh, mixed with AIDs from the earlier session and uh, that's, that's not something that we want so uh, I'm cleaning the, the data right here uh, and uh, we are getting these pairs uh, on which we can train the matrix factorization model and with, uh, with the matrix factorization model we can do a lot of things we can calculate various similarity scores 
uh, we can uh, generate candidates uh, to feed to our uh, ranker. So th there's, there's a lot that uh, matrix factorization uh, enables. And uh, if we look here, you know, uh, we have uh, a good bit of data. So we have 158 million rows. Uh, that's, uh, that's a sizable data set. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's now see uh, how we could construct a PyTorch data set and a PyTorch data loader uh, to uh, start feeding that data into our model. So, you know, uh, here I'm taking the approach that I learned uh, when constructing neural, uh, network, neural, neural networks, when training neural networks, and this is the approach that probably 99% of data scientists uh, in the field would take today. Uh, we are uh, constructing a uh, data set, uh, so um, essentially, you know, uh, the um, attribute here will hold the uh, a NumPy array of uh, AIDs. Uh, the uh, attribute AID2 will hold the uh, consecutive uh, AID, and uh, then the get item dunder method will uh, index into those NumPy arrays and will uh, return the correct uh, AIDs and uh, over to the uh, PyTorch data loader. So um, let us uh, let us uh, actually <laughs> put the show on the road uh, and and see see what happens. All right. So uh, I'm running the code here, and uh, essentially we're just iterating over the data loader over a single uh, epoch of uh, of uh, training uh, data. Um, the only Thing that I'm doing here is I'm uh, moving the data uh, onto the GPU just to be, you know, 100% uh, aligned with how we would be training our models. But that operation is uh, extremely inexpensive, so it will not affect the total uh, runtime uh, by more than a second. And let's see what our uh, computer is doing. So, uh, as we see, uh, all the cores are active and. Uh, the GPU, as we would expect, it's not moving much. We're just moving data back and forth, so um, there is no uh, utilization uh, visible here. Right, so uh, my uh, deep learning rig that I have on my desktop is uh, working away, and it seems that it uh, finished, possibly. Uh, it, it should be finishing here in a moment. All right, so a minute and seven seconds. That's uh, how long it took to iterate over uh, 2,413 batches of uh, 65,536 uh, rows uh, of, uh, of that amount of uh, pairs. And uh, so, so a batch uh, consists of a tensor, of two tensors, uh, each with uh, AIDs, where uh, the tensors live on the GPU. All right, so, so that is what we want. Now, uh, can, can we be faster here? Well, um, yes, uh, you know, there are other ways that we could write this code. We could uh, use the iterable data set or, you know, do something tricky with uh, reading data in chunks and, you know, trying to maybe uh, somehow manipulate uh, uh, these chunks to still have a random order. Uh, but uh, this is not what, what data scientists in the field would do. This is not what I want to do as a data scientist, right? I want to uh, write the simplest possible code, uh, write code that I understand that uh, uh, that can be that, that has a high chance of being bug free, and the uh, less code I write, the higher chance of that. Um, so uh, you know, uh, I definitely don't want to be investing my uh, time and effort into uh, writing essentially boilerplate uh, code just to just to make this uh, operation faster. And uh, in fact, there is uh, no. There is no straightforward uh, way of, of going about it to, 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 to speed this up, right? Um, well, or, or, or is there? Uh, let's take a look at the Merlin data loader and let's see what will happen here. Now, you need to be very careful and watch, uh, watch closely what's going on. So uh, here I'm just uh, loading a couple of libraries, uh, right? And uh, then I'm instantiating a Merlin data set and I'm feeding it to the data loader. So there's no code I'm writing here. Um, the um, shape of the batch and the rows, you know, they're extremely simple here. So the loader uh, infers all of that. But as we would move to 
more complex data, uh, that uh, effect would still hold. You know, we wouldn't have to be writing code here. So we would rely on the intelligence or, or on the uh, uh, code that uh, has been written for the data loader, the code that lives in a library that is tested uh, and, and so forth. Uh, and uh, now let's uh, let's iterate over the batch again and uh, over the uh, epoch again and let's see what happens. Okay, so it completed in uh, one third of a second. So what is this like uh, nearly 200 times uh, faster uh, than what we had before? Uh, and if you look at this, you know, it, it seems unbelievable, right? It seems unbelievable that the uh, data loader can be that fast, but um, in fact, it is, and, and this is, uh, these are the performance gains that, uh, of this magnitude that you can expect in your own workflows. Of course, if you are training an actual model on this data, then uh, ideally, especially with larger models, uh, the processing of, uh, uh, done by the model, uh, the uh, data flowing forwards and backwards through your model, that will be computationally more expensive and will require much more time. But uh, many of the REXIS models, uh, especially models for retrieval, they are uh, very mm, you know, computationally streamlined. So uh, this does make a difference. This does make a difference when working on real-life projects, uh, when uh, you want to arrive at good performance uh, via hyperparameter optimizations. Uh, all these costs, uh, you know, would, would, would add up. Um, and um, here we get magnificent performance for essentially um, no, <laughs> no additional lines of code, and actually for uh, fewer lines of code, code that, that we had before. So wh why I, wh while I uh, appreciate uh, um, that this is so fast and that there's less code to be uh, written, uh, that's actually not the main reason why I'm, you know, an extremely big fan of this technology. Uh, the, the, the reason that, uh, that I'm an extremely big fan of this technology is that uh, this approach uh, uh, scales to more complex problems. So right here you have the marine data set and uh, here we're just uh, feeding it uh, the, the pairs of data. But if we wanted to, something, to do something more elaborate, with uh, our uh, data, if we wanted to pre-process it in uh, some fashion, and this is uh, something that we understandably, understandably might want to do, um, maybe we want to categorify a column, you know, go for uh, strings to integer representations that we can then uh, train embeddings on, or uh, maybe if we want to do something more advanced to uh, give our model more predictive power, so maybe we want to Count encode uh, certain data, uh, certain columns. Maybe we want to target encode uh, certain columns. Target encoding is, uh, um, you know, uh, to, to implement. It's uh, um, it's not straightforward at all. And there are many um, inst situation, many s instances, many spots in the implementation where you can go wrong. Uh, so I don't want to be writing this code over and over again on every project that I'm working. I'd much rather. Uh, rely on a library uh, doing this for me. Uh, so this data set right here, uh, this data set uh, is a marine data set and that means that I can apply uh, pre-processing to it using uh, nvtabular. So, uh, you know, I, I can leverage uh, in the case of the target encoding uh, uh, operator, I, can, I, I would be tapping into code written in collaboration with Kaggle Grandmasters uh, all the code in the library is tested, um, and uh, I would still be able to feed it just as easily to the uh, marine data loader, and then um, in an extremely optimized fashion, iterate over it, move the data onto the GPU. We see that uh, here the batch, uh, just as before, the tensor from the current batch, the last batch, lives on the GPU, and uh, feed the data um, to my model. All right, uh, so uh, this is it. Now, uh, wh why is this so much faster? Right, so this is so much faster because of all the optimizations in the library, but also because we're not operating on uh, NumPy data sets. Uh, we are not uh, uh, operating, we don't uh, uh, rely on uh, PyTorch data loader collating these 
uh, large, uh, uh, small rows into a single batch. That's the expensive uh, operation. Uh, here, this is not the case. Um, so from uh, below the video, I will link to uh, this repository right here, where we have uh, tutorials walking you through how to get started with TensorFlow, how to get started with PyTorch. Um, and I will also be linking to the matrix factorization uh, notebook by JFP. Uh, and uh, here you will be able to uh, fork this uh, on Kaggle and you will be able to play around with, uh, with the Merlin data loader uh, yourself and see what uh, speed ups you will be able to get uh, in the uh, auto competition, but also probably more importantly on your real life workflows um, to get uh, you know, better performance in terms of iterations per second. But in the end, uh, being faster at this stage uh, leads to uh, better uh, predictive uh, power downstream. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. You know, I'm just uh, starting out this channel, so any feedback is greatly appreciated. Any positive feedback or any feedback, actually, for that matter. Uh, I'm planning to. I'm planning to. Uh, <laughs> I'm planning to um, have more videos like this on my channel very soon. Uh, so please stay tuned. Thank you so much for uh, for tuning in. Bye bye.